welcome eight-time Grammy nominee from Alice in Chains, Jerry Cantrell. Hello. How's it going? All right, a couple of rowdies out there, cool. Uh, maybe you know this one. You know, it's not much fun playing to a uh, recorded track, even if it is one of ours. So uh, why don't we, uh, we think about getting a band up here with me? Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Rocksmith. OK. Uh, edit session mode. Change band. OK. Uh, rock. Change instrument four. Okay, and page down. And synth. Okay, cool. Thank you yeah. so much, Jerry. That was killer. Thanks. All right, so tell us, hey everybody, tell us what just happened there. Uh, well, uh, this is the new session mode for uh, Rocksmith 2014, and uh, I picked a virtual band and started playing, and uh, the game's band reacts to what I do, and uh, it's like jamming with real musicians. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you think of session mode in general? Well, the technology is amazing, and uh, there's nothing really like it today. I have to tell you that it's really fun and addictive, and uh, you know you can play for hours trying uh, different bands and different instruments. Yeah. Hopefully, you can play for different hours, but we're not going to be able to sound like Jerry Cantrell. <laughs> 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 the new session mode is going to be a big part of Rocksmith 2014, which comes out this October, right. as well as many other new features and surprises, and of course, brand new music. And obviously, what I and everybody else want to know is if Alan's and Allison Chains is going to be on the game. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think the new single Stone is going to be excellent. Yeah. Excellent again. Yeah. we would all aspire to play like you on that song. We are yeah. so proud to be part of a product that makes guitar playing more accessible. 
for a wider audience, that's you. That's you guys are excited yeah. about that as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, anything that gets guitar in uh, yeah. guitars and hands is uh, is a good thing for kids. You know, so or anybody. Yeah. 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 Well, it's uh, it's awesome for all aspiring guitar players, whether you're a beginner or not. Rocksmith 2014 is the fastest way to learn guitar. So everybody, give it up for the incredible Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. Thank you very much. So great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having oh, me. Awesome. Yeah. I did so many dirty deeds to Alice in Chains when I was a kid, and also the other day. All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Ubisoft E3 2013 Media Briefing. I am your host, Aisha Tyler. Welcome. Welcome to the show. I am so incredibly excited to be back to introduce a straight bonkers slate of games. I'm so freaking amped. E3 is my favorite time of the year. It's like Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, my birthday, a boss fight, and a UFC heavyweight championship rolled all into one. I literally could not sleep last night. And that, well, that's because I was playing EC3, but I still, I didn't sleep at all. And last year, we got a little taste of the future. I know you guys remember it with the announcement of Watch Dogs. It was awesome. Yes. I know how I, know how I feel about Watch Dogs. And in the hopes of building on that excitement, Ubisoft is diving belly first, ass out, into the next gen pool. And if what I saw in rehearsals is any indication, we should all be pretty freaking excited. So I can't wait to kick this off. Now, if you're anything like me, when you get excited, you also have a million questions. And uh, I want you guys to feel free to tweet your questions or your reactions using the hashtags that you're going to see throughout the show, all right? And then after the show, I'm going to be hosting the official live post show with the Ubisoft dev teams. We're going to answer whatever you guys throw at us, all right? So fire away if the urge strikes you. And remember, there are no stupid questions. Yes, yes, there are. There are very stupid questions, absolutely. But don't worry, we'll answer those too. I promise you that. Uh, maybe not the way you wanted, but we will answer them. Kicking things off today is a game that you will be able to get your grubby mitts on in just a few short weeks. August 20th marks the return of the unique and iconic franchise, Splinter Cell. Yes, feel free to clap. You know you want to. I can't wait for what is probably the most detailed and rewarding secret operative experience of its generation. Splinter Cell Blacklist is, quite simply, the biggest Splinter Cell ever. It is packed with everything you could possibly want. An engrossing single-player campaign starring Sam Fisher, multiple co-op missions, and, as you probably know by now because you're spoiling buddies, the legendary Spies vs. Mercs multiplayer makes its triumphant return. But, as they say at UBC, yeah, you can clap for that too. Being stoked is allowed. This is not an economics conference. As they say at Ubisoft, Sassufi, this is Splinter Cell Blacklist. America. This is the Blacklist. Blacklist. We have one demand. You have soldiers in 153 countries. Bring your ships home. Your ships home. Now. 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 Or every week, we will attack you. We are the engineers. We've got some crazy action going on. Don't take me out of the Done. Done. The world is looking for answers, Mr. Fisher, and I don't have any. The professional needs to find them. You can't do that without a leader. The next man comes with no questions asked. You can have Charlie Cole. And Grimm's daughter has recruited one of the CIA's best for mission support, Isaac Briggs. Grimm is out. Sorry, Sam, that's a non-starter. Nobody works better with you than she does. Welcome to Fourth Echelon, Mr. Fisher. Paladin One and the Fourth Echelon team are ready, Madam President. We're running analytics to find the target locations as we speak. I'll get you up to speed on the plane. Prototype military transport. Loaded with custom modifications. Every resource that you'd have on the ground. This puppy makes Air Force One look like a paper airplane, hey, Sam? Word of a stunning attack on the massive U.S. military installation on the island of Guam. A group calling themselves the Engineers has claimed responsibility. They're calling the attacks the Blacklist. The Blacklist. The Blacklist. You can't stop the Blacklist. Grenade! 
Trigger that bomb. Ready. Three, two, one. Hey, Sam, it looks like you're in the sweet spot to launch the tri rotor. Do a sweep with your goggles. We hunt them down, force them to make mistakes. We can't wait. This is it, Briggs. I'll cover your head. Briggs, I'm waiting on you. Teamwork. Love it. Copy that, Briggs. Nice shooting. Time to go on. What are you planning? Oh, we're past planning. We want to execution. Sam, it's about to get ugly. Local talent is closing on your position. Yes, and there goes my fall. Now, another icon, I got a different mic. The last one was going in and out. Hopefully this one works. If it doesn't, I'll just start screaming at you. Nothing more fun than a giant black lady screaming at you, especially in bed. Another iconic Ubisoft character with a new game on the way is Rayman. In 1995, he was just a cute two-dimensional little bugger designed for the Atari Jaguar time machine. And now 18 years and 13 games later, Rayman has firmly staked its claim as one of Ubisoft's most beloved characters and acclaimed franchises. Off the heels of the highly rated Rayman Origins and the 2012 iPhone Game of the Year Rayman Jungle Run, welcome to the gorgeous world of Rayman Legends. Super fun, right? Adorable. Now, we know that you guys have been waiting for a long time for this game, but Ubisoft really wanted to make it the biggest and best Rayman to date, and you will be able to play it on September 3rd, very, very soon. To celebrate E3, Michel Ancel and his team have a nice, juicy taste of what the new Rayman is going to look like. Enjoy. <laughs> The Glade of Dreams is in danger, my friend. Go! Quickly wake up our legendary heroes!
Rayman has always been that game where you're telling yourself while you're playing, all right, just one more, and then I'll take my kid to the emergency room. A little bit of ice, that'll help. Next up is a newcomer that is already adding to Ubisoft's stable of memorable characters. The mighty quest for epic loot is all about giving users the ability to create content and compete within a humorous, persistent, free-to-play world. At its core, it's a game that teaches how to thrive in a capitalist society. You build up your own stuff, and then you go take other people's stuff who aren't as capable of defending themselves, because you're a nice guy, and then you do that over and over again until you die. Here to tell you all about it is brand creative director, Louis-Pierre Farron. Thanks, Aisha. The Mighty Quest for Epic Loot welcomes you to the world of Opulencia. Your goal is simple. It is all about stealing from your neighbor and protecting your pile of loot. So first things first. Build up your castle and protect it from invaders. Fill it with deadly creatures and traps that will hopefully keep your treasure room safe. You'll have a ton of tricks up your sleeve to let you be creative in the way you want to take invaders out. Now, choose your hero. I personally love to play tonight, so gear him up and choose a victim. If it's a friend, that's even better. And players know that they need to protect their treasure, so it's never a walk in the park to reach the treasure room. You'll need to use different skills, tactics, and even in some cases, try out different heroes to reach that delicious treasure. If you manage to defeat his defenses, make sure you let him know you stopped by and leave him a friendly message. My personal motto is to loot and protect. And this is why I'm generously inviting you all to try to take a piece of my treasure. So head over my castle. The address is LPPA, you know me, at level 30. Today, we're proud to announce that we've reached our closed beta. So just go to themightyquest.com and join us now. To celebrate this, the night, Sir Payne Hammer will take you behind the scenes of what really happened when we visited this castle in our announcement trailer. You put it in cold water, it shrinks. Oh, hi. Sir Payne Hammer here. When a crew of world-renowned filmmakers approached me to document a day in my life, my only question to them was, what took you so long? Join me on a little voyage that I like to call making a masterpiece. This is my castle. There are many like it, but this one is... I don't like to brag or anything, but I've looted hundreds of... Ah! This is Nigel. He's like a deadly weapon and the bestest friend you could ever have, all in one. Good Lord, OMG. Where is it all coming from? Go 26, get up front set, please. I call this my gauntlet of doom. It's awesome for keeping out any would-be thieves. I'm okay. My spine takes the brunt of the impact. Leaving so soon? Ah, go f yourself. Okay. Take care now. Have a good trip, you son of a Your mother Some banana trees in my day. Bigger saline drip. Friggin' alphabet soup and Dust Bowl Carnival. Was that a bit too much? Guys, that was too much, wasn't it? Humor and gaming are obviously two of my favorite things in the world, and if you combine them into a single experience, it's pretty much digital crack. Which brings us to one of the newest members of the Ubisoft family, South Park, the Stick of Truth. Yes, yes. I think the first name they pitched didn't make it past the censors. With 16 seasons and a film behind them, Matt Stone and Trey Parker have shown there is literally no subject that they cannot make you laugh at.
teach you a fart called the Nagasaki. It's called the Nagasaki because if you do it right, it makes people go, ooh. Nagasaki! Remember one very important thing. Never, ever fart on anyone's balls. You got that? All right. Coming this holiday season. Or some holiday season, hopefully kind of soon. You know how video games are. <laughs> ah, hashtag Nagasaki farts. Absolutely, and you're welcome, Internet. Now, it's time to get serious, all right? It's the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's next-gen time. You, yes, you can get excited about that too, or you can be pissy about it like the internet. Uh, Ubisoft continues to cement its place atop the gaming industry with its iconic and enduring franchises and groundbreaking creative development. And I am so freaking happy to welcome the man responsible for guiding the company to its current level of extraordinary success. So everybody, give a huge hand for Ubisoft co-founder and CEO, Yves Guillemot. Nice to see you. You too? How are you? Me too. So, Eve, I'm incredibly happy to be back this year. So excited to be here with you. You're here to kick off the next gen segment of the show, and you've been really vocal. And I know I'm a giantess. I'm literally like two people put into one. I know, I know. It's, you're feeling LeBron James for me. It's okay. I understand. Now you've been really vocal in the media about getting these new consoles going, haven't you? Why exactly is that? You know, because at Ubisoft we love new consoles. So mm -hmm. yeah, and it drives next-gen gaming and big leaps forward. So what have you got for us today? You know, I want to show you a new game from uh, talented teams at Ivory Tower and Reflection. You know, I'm very, very proud of this game. I'm convinced it's going to revolutionize the genre. Oh. So it's called The Crew. So take a look. Excellent.
That was so incredible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to the creative director of the crew, Julian Garrity. Hey, Aisha. How's it going? How are you? Welcome. How's it going? You look rad. Thank you very much. Yeah. You look pretty rad yourself. Thank you. All right. It's not a puppy, but it's with the compliments of the team. Oh, wow. There's very a little, nice. There's a little special something on there for you. Ah, okay. Well, you know, normally I don't take bribes, but when it comes to gaming, I am incredibly unscrupulous. I have no morals whatsoever. So, later. Thank you very much. So, a new generation of hardware demands a new experience for driving games. With the crew, our first step was to ask, how do we use this new tech to change the status quo of driving games? The first answer we came up with, more variety in a video game world as big as has ever been created. Iconic city streets, off-road countryside, forests, mountains, desert flats, sand dunes, the whole of the USA. Now, with this ultimate player open world playground in place, for the first time ever, you'll experience all the adventures of driving as you seek to infiltrate and take over a criminal organization one city at a time. Doing so, you'll experience what total freedom is. It's up to you to choose your cars, your customizations, your style of playing. This is driving at its most exciting, varied, open, and I like to think fun. How can we make this next-gen driving experience even more thrilling? We believe that sharing and competing with friends is essential. So we've made the entire game an online persistent world, blurring the line between the single player, the co-op, and competitive modes. You can't play solo, of course, but even better. Group, group up with your friends, create a crew, and play co-op in every single mission, event, or race. Those traffic cars you were driving past at 180 miles per hour in downtown Detroit, they could be AI, but they could also be potential rivals or crew members creating a truly immersive world that is very much alive. Now we're going to jump into a live demo of the game where we'll see everything that I've just mentioned. We'll follow four players in four different regions of the USA. Then they'll all unite in Miami, forming a crew, customizing their vehicles to perform a takedown mission together. Our first stop is in New York City, where Steve is kicking off an illegal street race across the Brooklyn Bridge and outrunning the police. of New York, we join our second player, Fergus. Exploring Black Hills, close to Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. Now he's exploring with a friend, tracking down some skills. And there are thousands of these 20-second trials scattered throughout the world. Each one will reward you with experience, cash, and parts. And you see those hills over there? You can drive all the way over there and explore them too. Lie, and he's driving through the back roads in Nevada. He's going to launch a skill that requires him to beat a ghost, one of the ways we feature asynchronous challenges. But get this, he's driving a high-speed performance car that needs to stay on the road to really perform versus the ghost of his friend, a dirt car that is built for going across rocky terrain. Just over the hill, you can see Las Vegas. You could drive all the way down there and drag race the strip. But what we're going to do is to join Paul in the streets of Miami, our final stop. 
Now, Paul is wearing a hat, so he's not very good, and needs some help to finish a cooperative mission. So, he's sending invites to all of his friends, the three other players that we just saw, to beat a mission in a cooperative way. Note that there was no lobby, no separation of the online multiplayer and the single player experience. And this demo is live, so we're bound to make a few mistakes. Now our customization system is something that we're pretty proud of. It allows players to tailor their car to exactly the character of performance that every race, challenge, or mission requires. And yes, you can strip all the parts away from your, the body of the car, choose the individual performance parts from the engine to the rims, and build the vehicle back up. Now that the crew is ready, they're gonna launch the, the, the cooperative mission. This was much easier when the room was empty. Sorry about that. Now it's a takedown of a rival faction driver that will take our four players across busy city roads, through backyards, across grassy parkland, and over beach dunes. The city of Miami is truly their driving playground. And as the players celebrate the completion of another mission, we see the arrival of a new threat in the form of a rival crew. The core of the game is collaborating and competing, and now it's up to the crew of four friends to work together to see off this new challenge. Meet him and
And there's something else. The tablet that I gave Aisha earlier on wasn't a bribe, wasn't just no. a bribe. She used it to prepare her own car while we were playing the game on stage. Yeah, you guys just took me through it backstage, and it's rad, it's very cool. You can customize the ride on your iPad, and the one that I just customized on my iPad is now available in the game, which is killer. And that's something that everyone here can try on the booth tomorrow. I will show But you. it's not all we have for our second screen experience. Very, very cool. Insane. Everybody very much. needs to check this out. It's so awesome. Thanks for the demo. Thank very you. cool. You can, yes, you can hold on to that for me. All right. Now, imagine that with one touch of your phone screen, you could bring up any personal information you would want on any person in this room. If you had all that personal information at your fingertips, is there any limit? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Now, we live in a world where everyone and everything is connected. I mean, our lives are basically stored on computers, and we rely on our smartphones to connect with work, with information, and even with the people we love. Now, in Watch Dogs, the question we ask is, what would you do if you could hack into all those devices, if you could basically pry into anyone's darkest secrets, and if you had complete control over the systems in the city of Chicago? And you will experience this through Aidan Pierce, a man whose obsession with surveillance will transform him into a vigilante. But what kind of vigilante, and more importantly, to inflict what kind of justice? Well, that's a question you will have to answer on your own. Let's take a look.
Thank you. Thank you. Now, last year at E3, Watch Dogs was the surprise of the show. And earlier this year, we unveiled an open world Chicago with unprecedented interactions. Now, at this E3, we have plenty more surprises to reveal. So I expect to be seeing a lot more of Watch Dogs very soon. Very exciting and horrifying and awesome. I would actually go off the grid, except I don't want to give up my gamer score. So <laughs> I'll never abandon that number. Thank you so much, Dominic. It's that was so, pleasure. so cool. Thank you. Give it up for Dominic. Thank Gay. you very much. I give Dominic my number, but clearly he already has it. All right. Now, that game is pretty hardcore. But fortunately, the next game is the complete opposite. It is singing and dancing in front of your television like a crazed lunatic, a happy, high-storing, crazed lunatic. This is Just Dance 2014. <laughs> this is what I win. Christina Aguilera. From the tallest building in Tokyo, long way from them hallways, built with souls and oh yes, they count it always, real fat, all day, now baby we can party, oh baby we can party, she read books, especially about red rooms and tie-ups, I got a hook, cause she see me in a suit with a red tie tied up, big thing, it's nice to meet you, but time is money, only difference is I own it, now let's stop time and enjoy this moment. Evolution of Party Gaming drops this October across all platforms. All right, now, did you guys know that the Just Dance franchise actually got its start as a mini game in one of Ubisoft's Raving Rabbids games? Well, now you do. And today, Ubisoft is once again using the Raving Rabbids as the base for changing the way that people think about entertainment. In 2011, Ubisoft created Ubisoft Motion Pictures, and you probably already know that these guys are working on very exciting movie projects around, around Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell. I got so excited I couldn't speak. What you may not know is that they're also preparing to unleash those insane little creatures into your television screens. Done in partnership with France Television and Nickelodeon here in the United States, Rabbids Invasion, the TV show, is about to launch very soon. And here's the deal, not only will you be able to watch the show on TV, but for the first time, you're gonna be able to play it on your interactive screens. Yes, play your TV show. Here is a first taste of all the craziness you're gonna get from those little rabbits. Take a look. Adorable. 
awesome and adorable. To talk about uh, to talk about Rabbit's Invasion, the interactive TV show. Please welcome Adrian Lacey, who's here to explain how the way that we entertain is about to completely change. Hi. Hi, Aisha. Hello, E3. How are you? Hi. Well, good to Another see you. I know. Talk. I'm. It's me. They're all normal size. <laughs> I am a mutant. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So. TV and movies have long mastered the art of engaging the emotions of an audience through great storytelling. They make us laugh, cry, angry, afraid, even scream like little girls. <laughs> or big ones. <laughs> Think about how many times you and your kids have tried to tell a TV or movie character to watch out, it's right behind you, run you fool. Or even solve the whodunit from your favorite detective before he's actually done it. So, what about actually being part of the story? Maybe even getting off your butt and being part of the entertainment itself, both on and off screen. Well, this generation of consoles, tablets, and mobile devices are finally making that possible. Microsoft is at the forefront of this intersection, and we're proud to announce our close partnership in bringing this new experience to Xbox One. TV is about to invade your living room and bring it back to life like never before. Very, very cool. So tell me, what kind of goofiness can we expect from the Rabbids TV show? So let's have a look at the first episode and some of the interactive missions that you'll be able to experience on your various devices. In this case, the mo using the motion control camera. So now you can dance with the Rabbids and mimic them to help the story move forward. There are also puzzles to solve using your voice, and you can play a series of observation games like Spot the Chicken, which we'll see in a minute. So the fun comes from actively participating in your favorite scenes. Check out the chicken showdown as the kids rack up the points trying to massacre our little bunnies with rotten eggs by simply aiming with their finger. So now the observation game. The fastest draw wins. And finally, what could be better than screaming with your children instead of at them? Super fun, super fun, and another game in which my five-year-old nephew is totally going to crush me, so thanks for that. Uh, Adrian Lacey, everybody, give it Thank up for Adrian. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Super cute. All right. It's about that time, guys. We've had our fun with dancing and rabbits, but now it's time to get back to the core gamer goodness, and that means that it's time for Assassin's Creed. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now, when you think about it, let's be honest, we've always wanted to be a pirate. All of us, the high seas, the adventure, the rampant spread of infectious diseases, and in Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag, you are a pirate. And to show us what that pirate is all about for the first time, here's a brand new trailer. Point your face at
Oh. Oh. Holy crap. That was all of the fun, all of it. Here to tell us a little bit more, please welcome the creative director on Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Jean Guedon. How do I shout? Very everybody? cool, very, very cool. Uh, the Assassin's guys are actually pretty jumpy backstage. Either you guys have been hanging out with the energy drink girls or you are incredibly stoked about this year. We're very excited, Aisha. As you can see from that trailer, we promise to deliver a brutal pirate experience. Epic naval battles, intense combat on land, and a lot of drunken chaos. <laughs> but being a pirate wasn't always about swashbuckling violence or caricatures you see in movies. I'm, I'm kind of bummed. I was really looking forward to doing a lot of swashbuckling. It it's a, fun. It's a wonderful word. However, it would probably be misapplied to the story of Edward Kenway. During the two years of development, we researched the era and understood why pirates makes everyone so exciting. And it's because they're the perfect symbol of freedom, rebellion, and adventure. These men and women were ready to die young in order to live their own life. A short life, but a merry one, to quote the infamous Bart Roberts. Well, that does sound like something a pirate would say to somebody right before they ran them through as they were swashbuckling. And those sound like the perfect ingredients for a pirate game. Indeed. Actually, they're the perfect ingredients for an Assassin's Creed game. And we designed Black Flag to support these topics. They define every design decision we've made. The game will allow you to explore this pirate world the way you want, taking part or not in many different activities, boarding ships, finding treasures, raiding smuggler caves, hunting, attacking forts, and so many more, on land and sea. Basically, from the Caribbean mangroves to the rooftops of Havana, from underwater shipwrecks to ancient Mayan temples, the game is an invitation. An invitation to fight, roam, and explore. An invitation to immerse yourself in one of the most ambitious open-world games ever created. During this E3, we will show you different demos illustrating this feeling of being a parrot, strong and free. But today, I want to open a window on this world for you with some direct in-game footage. Mm. Thanks, and have a great E3. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, can't wait to play that. The next title comes from a brand that was next generation before the next generation arrived. Take a look. 
The future has been foretold. Our world will be changed forever. And into this world, the next generation of heroes will rise and fall. As you can see, Trials is crazy fun, and in 2014, Ubisoft drops two new Trials games. Trials Fusion for Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 consoles, and the PC, and for the first time, one exclusively for mobile devices called Trials Frontier. Trials Fusion features a brand new trick system that lets you fly through the air on a bike, which looked killer, and is exactly as close as I ever need to come to being 50 feet above ground doing motocross, because I like to threaten my life virtually, not in real life. The two different versions will actually work together and complement one another, and this allows users to access previous runs, see high scores, and interact with the thriving online community anywhere through your smartphone. Finally, doubles and triples are within your grasp on your phone, and I can't wait. Eve, hi. Uh, uh, welcome back. Um, it's, you know, I was actually just about to wrap things up. Maybe. Uh, get a bacon wrap hot dog, or we could get some poutine. Want to get some poutine with me? Yeah, I really came to say uh, thank you for the, for the fans who oh, are yeah. giving us uh, a great support, and the ones that are watching us today, but also some of them that are with us in the room today. We have some super fans here in the house. Say what's up. Yes. Awesome. I knew you were happier than the rest of the group. <laughs> but I have something more to show you today. Oh. You know, we want to take advantage of the next generation of consoles to enter a new genre. You know, the open world online RPG. So this game is brought to you by one of the best studios in the world, Massive Entertainment. I am super excited about it. You know, I think you will be too. It's so amazing. So let's watch it. Thank you. <laughs> In 2001, a real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling the system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. 
A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. From this point, the breakdown will happen fast. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed. Transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, people will do anything for survival. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies, sleeper cells, covert agents, but nothing can be confirmed. Our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains? Hello everyone. I'm Niklas Sederstrom, Creative Director at Massive Entertainment. It's a scary question, isn't it? But we have the answer. Today we're extremely proud and excited to share with you all a whole new entry of one of our most beloved franchises. It has been three weeks since the deadly pandemic hit New York City on Black Friday. So what will it take to save what remains? The Division a classified unit of self-supported tactical agents, our last hope when all else fails. In the Dame game where you're about to see, my friends and I have been dispatched to the Brooklyn area. With one of us playing on his tablet in real time, we're heading towards a police station we heard was in bad shape.
guys want to check your skills and switch it up, you can. I'm gonna pull him out. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm good. Let's do it. Get him out for me, will you? Some more cops in here. Oh, son of a... Listen, the armory is out back. Take whatever you need. The code is SH-1023. The code? The code for the armory. Boys, that would be useful. Good to be out of there. Okay, I think that's everybody in this room. Okay, I'm going for the armory. Should be back here. That hallway's clear. It's still up and running. Thank you. With Tom Clancy's The Division, you will discover a whole new online open world RPG experience coming out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Society is on the brink of collapse. So remember, it could happen at any time. It could happen to you.
That was, every time Ubisoft unveils new IP, I just lose my mind. That looks so, so beautiful. Take it easy, it's not real money, and I'm pretty sure it's not infected. Uh, that is it for us, guys. This has been an incredible afternoon. Every single killer game you saw here will be yours to explore at the UB booth on the board here at E3. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're watching online, put on some pants and stay tuned for the post-show wrap-up with fan questions and live reactions from our experts. And to everyone lucky enough to be here at E3 in the flesh, you know what to do. Get down to the UB booth and do that shit. We'll see you there. Incredible Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. We've got visual confirmation. Sam, talk to me. He's dead. Take them out before they trigger that bomb. Ready. Three, two, one. This is it, Briggs. I'll cover your head.